les up guys? J'espère que vous allez bien, que vous êtes en pleine forme. Bienvenue sur le podcast de Conversation Awesome avec Karma Kill. A place where we speak Franglish, say the word awesome a lot, mais surtout un endroit d'inspiration et d'éducation pour vous aider à optimiser votre santé globale from the inside out. Mon nom est Claudia, fondatrice de Karmakin, et ma mission avec ce podcast est de t'amener dans un monde de développement personnel, d'optimisation d'habitudes de vie et de découverte so you can unleash your potential and live the life you truly want and deserve. Merci d'être à l'écoute. You're awesome. J'ai tout un cadeau pour vous aujourd'hui. J'espère que tu es prête à prendre des notes, à écouter attentivement, à être open-minded, à avoir ton mindset changé à tout jamais. Parce que la conversation awesome d'aujourd'hui est une entrevue avec moi, évidemment, et nul autre que the one and only Brenda Johnston. Et c'est qui Brenda? Brenda, c'est ma coach en mindset. C'est un pilier, un morceau tellement important de ma propre croissance personnelle en tant que femme, en tant qu'entrepreneur, en tant que soul depuis déjà plusieurs années. Et c'est incroyable le ripple effect que cette femme-là a causé dans ma vie parce que grâce à elle, non seulement je suis, comme je disais, une meilleure femme, une meilleure entrepreneur, mais je suis aussi une meilleure coach parce que je peux utiliser beaucoup des apprentissages que j'ai eu avec elle dans mon propre coaching avec mes clientes. Parce que te beau avoir le plan de nutrition parfait, le plan d'entraînement parfait, si tu as des limiting beliefs, s'il y a des choses qui se passent dans ton subconscient entre tes deux oreilles qui te retiennent, ben tu les atteindras pas tes objectifs, peu importe c'est quoi tes objectifs. Avant de deep dive into all of that et de vous présenter la conversation awesome qu'on a eue, je voulais vous parler rapidement de ce que Brenda fait au quotidien. She's a high performance mindset coach et elle va aider surtout les femmes à arrêter tout ce qui est self-sabotaging pour qu'on puisse unlock notre mindset d'abondance et être capable de manifester n'importe quoi dans nos vies. Elle fait ça en nous aidant à transformer tout ce qui est limiting beliefs, nos peurs, n'importe quoi qui va nous causer des patterns au niveau de nos pensées, de nos comportements, qui vont amener justement de l'inquiétude et tout ça, et vraiment transformer ça dans des nouveaux patterns, des nouveaux beliefs qui vont amener beaucoup plus de confiance et ce fameux « abundance mindset-là » qui va nous aider à avoir de la richesse dans toutes les sphères de notre vie. Évidemment, pas juste de la richesse financière. Donc, c'est super powerful, elle utilise différentes méthodes, que ce soit l'hypnose, les affirmations, pour vraiment « tap into our subconscious mind » et on va jaser de tout ça pendant notre conversation awesome. Fait comme je disais, I hope you're ready, j'espère que tu as un papier, un crayon pour prendre des notes, parce que les exemples qu'on va donner, les trucs que Brenda va nous expliquer, c'est littéralement « life-changing ». Et je parle par expérience, c'est pour ça que je suis tellement excited de l'avoir comme euh, invitée aujourd'hui puis vous de la partager. « She works magic », c'est quelque chose qu'on va souvent dire ceux qui travaillent avec Brenda, « She does magic ». Elle m'a aidé personnellement, moi, à... Oh my God, la liste est tellement longue à créer plus d'impact dans ma business, donc évidemment beaucoup plus d'income dans ma business, à redevenir moi-même, à me défaire de toutes ces croyances-là que j'avais qui ne me servaient plus, qui ne m'aidaient pas à être authentiquement, moi-même, avec confiance, peu importe j'étais où dans le monde, elle m'a aidé à me défaire de certaines relations, me défaire de certains comportements, certaines pensées qui, encore une fois, ne servaient pas mon « higher self ».« She calls me out on my bullshit, guys, I have to admit euh, <rire> ». Tu sais, les choses, des fois, qu'on peut pas se dire nous-mêmes ou que notre « gut » essaie de nous dire depuis longtemps, mais que nous, on justifie ça par tout ce qui se passe en les deux oreilles, ben, elle nous le dit avec tellement d'amour et tellement de franchise que ça nous permet d'avoir la confiance de faire ce qu'on a à faire puis de manifester pretty much anything we want in our lives. Bref, je pourrais vous parler encore très longtemps de toutes sortes d'exemples et d'effets positifs awesome que j'ai eu dans ma vie grâce à Brenda, but I also want you to have a taste of her magic. Alors, let's dive in the interview, have an open mind, take some notes, et comme vous l'avez sûrement deviné, l'entrevue sera en anglais. Alors, bonne écoute! All right. Welcome, Brenda, to this awesome conversation. I am super excited and also very grateful to have you as my special guest today. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. I know for a fact that it's going to help so many listeners because today we're going to talk about a very awesome, juicy topic. 
the subconscious mind and how to, you know, get rid of limiting beliefs and use the affirmations and learn about this whole concept. If it's the first time you hear about this concept, so it can help you unlock your potential. Like you say, activate your abundance mindset. So we're going to have a lot of questions, a lot of examples as well, stuff that I've been through, um, a lot of things that I think women can relate to because sometimes we're aware consciously that we do stuff. I always give the example of the bag of chips, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm aware consciously that I should not be eating this whole bag of chips, but I still do it, right? So we're going to dive into all of that. So I'm super excited. Me too. The mind is one of my favorite places to dive into. <laughs> yeah. And working on the mindset has been something that I added to my coaching uh, in the last few years, because I would give the perfect nutrition plan to clients, the perfect training plans to clients, and then we would have conversations and they would still not do it. So I was like, huh, maybe there's something between their two ears that doesn't add up because even when you have the quote unquote perfect game plan or, you know, targets or goals if you don't step into action if there is something that's holding you back that you need to deep dive a lot more into what is it that's holding you back and like you said that comes a lot from your mindset yeah it totally does and really just being self-aware enough to start to look for the patterns mm -hmm. and the moment that you become self-aware so the bag of chips is a great example I'm eating the bag of chips and I know I sh probably shouldn't be eating the bag of chips, but I'm eating them anyway. Okay. So now you've caught yourself in a pattern. Now you have to interrupt the pattern, which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. But once you start to see where the patterns are and you start to interrupt the patterns, you can start to change your behaviors and your actions and create new habits. Mm -hmm. yeah, but sometimes I've we have beliefs deep down inside, right? It's like, oh. Well, maybe on a subconscious level, I don't actually want to get healthy because maybe the last time I was healthy, my marriage fell apart or something traumatic happened, you know, or maybe I don't actually want to get healthy because growing up, I watched my mom diet my whole entire life. Mm -hmm. So healthy equals restriction, which equals loss, which equals my brain going, ew, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. I love that you mentioned self-awareness and habits. Those are two things I always talk about. Like you have to be aware before you can even make any changes in your life. And that's why I always start with my clients, like write what you eat down, you know, like write down what you eat and you don't need a nutrition coach to figure out that, oh, I've been skipping lunch two days out of three, right? Oh, I haven't had a vegetable in five days or, oh, I'm eating way more, you know, sugar than I thought I was. So the self-awareness is key. Yeah. And habits. I always coach about mm -hmm. habits because you become what you do every day. And if you want to change your habits, you need to be aware that these habits don't serve you anymore. So yeah, exactly. super exciting. Yeah. Amazing. So let's start with talking about the subconscious mind. Um, so for someone who's never heard of that term, doesn't know what its role, how would you explain it, its roles, how it can, you know, like you said, dictate some of the behaviors and patterns. So let's dive into that first. Mm -mm -mm. So our mind is a beautiful machine. It reflects to us what is going on inside of us. And there's multiple parts of our mind, but we're going to focus on the subconscious. And the subconscious mind is, if you think about it, like a storage facility for all of the experiences you've had up until this point. It stores your beliefs, your previous experiences, your memories, your skills, all the things we do on autopilot, like breathe, walk, eat. It stores everything you've seen, done, thought up until this point right now. So everything in the past, the subconscious is responsible for. And it's probably about 95% of our brain power. So if you were to think about it like uh, an iceberg, And you see the little tip of the iceberg? Mm -hmm. That's your conscious mind. So where we are right now, the conscious mind is the present moment. Right. And then the subconscious is underneath the water. That's what the Titanic hit and nobody was expecting it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is where all of the stuff is stored that we don't really think about on a daily basis. Your subconscious mind is really interesting because it doesn't know the difference between what is real And what is vividly imagined? The language of the subconscious is visualization, which is why when we talk about the affirmations, very useful 
as a tool to help program your subconscious or reprogram it. Your subconscious takes everything literally, which is why your thoughts and your words are so powerful. Mm-hmm. Your subconscious thrives on emotion. So it's the emotion and the visualization that create new beliefs, new patterns, new habits, whatever. And here's the thing. Our subconscious mind is the most beautiful, most powerful partner that we have. We have just never been taught how to harness the power of it, how to connect to it, how to get it to work with us instead of against us. So you'll hear a lot of people talking about, oh, your limiting beliefs keeping you stuck and blah, 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 and like really bashing the subconscious because they don't understand the power of our whole mind working together. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing when you figure it out and you've experienced a lot of this, so you know. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. So what would you say is the subconscious mind main role? How does it protect us or how does it dictate, like you said, about 95% of what we do every day? Essentially our subconscious mind's job, if we want to give it a job is to keep us safe. Mm. So anytime you're going to up-level something, anytime you're going to change something in your life. So for example, go changing your health and nutrition, your subconscious looks at it and goes, Oh yeah, I don't, I don't really want to do that. Cause that, no, no, that's not going to be good or fun. So I'm going to try to keep you safe. And I'm going to bring up these patterns of self-sabotage because I'm trying to keep you safe mm-hmm. because it doesn't know, but here's the interesting part. And people don't realize our conscious mind and our subconscious work very closely together. Our conscious mind, we can use it to direct our subconscious mind. Mm but we just don't know how to do that typically. So if we're focused, consciously, we're looking at that plate of broccoli and chicken and we're going, oh, broccoli and chicken. That looks really boring and bland. Your subconscious will find experiences from the past to prove you right, (laughs) that it is boring and you don't want to eat it. Mm -hmm. Our subconscious mind is very smart (laughs) because it has all of those experiences. So consciously it's like, Ooh, broccoli and chicken. Yep. Subconscious goes, Oh yeah. Remember that time when you were 16 and you went on that diet and it was a cabbage soup diet. You couldn't eat anything except cabbage soup. And then you started eating just broccoli and chicken. It was horrible. And then your conscious mind and your subconscious are having this conversation. You're like, Oh yeah. And then your nervous system kicks in. It's like, Oh, I don't want to do that. (laughs) So like, our mind and our nervous system, everything is connected. Yeah. But he's really, he, I'm calling him he, our subconscious (laughs) mind really just just wants to keep us safe. Yeah. And it's also a goal getting machine. Mm -hmm. So if you have a goal and you learn how to harness the power of your subconscious mind, it will do whatever to help you get to that goal. Mm -hmm. And I think one point that I always explain to my clients, keeping you safe is not the same as keeping you healthy. Yeah. So safe for your body does not mean that it's the healthiest option. It's just what your subconscious knows, mm-hmm. right? Because it's comfort, it's, it's familiar. It's so even though it's not safe, quote unquote, safe for you to be binging all the time, because that's not good for your health, then it's not a mistake of your subconscious mind to leave you in this, these patterns because that is safe for you, even though it's not healthy. So there is a difference there. I think. Yeah. And that is a freaking amazing point Mm. because our subconscious mind is keeping us safe based on beliefs we've developed that are not even our own. Mm -hmm. So we develop beliefs from the time, like our core beliefs are developed between the age of like zero and seven we see what trusted adults are doing we model that we hear what trusted adults are saying we form beliefs based on that we have uh, significant emotional experiences we form core beliefs based on that Mm -hmm. everything you believe is not even yours which is kind of mind-blowing if you think yeah (laughs) i was gonna say take that in guys (laughs) yeah so diet culture especially is huge like I'm 46 I really did watch my mother diet all the time Mm -hmm. I thought it was I'm using air quotes here normal 
to be on a diet all the time. I thought that being healthy meant that you had to suffer. Yeah. So (laughs) a bunch of beliefs that weren't mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you get older and you want to eat healthier, you want to lose weight or whatever, then you're like, oh, the only way that I know is by dieting, by being miserable, by hating this. Nobody wants to be in that state. So might as well stay in your patterns. And that's when we hear the word I'm stuck. I've tried everything. I'm stuck. I'll never lose the weight. I'll never be able to change my lifestyle or start training or all of that. So it comes from, like you said, a very, very young age. Um, So does that mean that we should all call our moms and (laughs) And yell at them? No, our parents did the very best they could with what they had. (laughs) You just said something really interesting too. So I get a lot of clients who call me up and they're like, I'm feeling blocked around this area. And I'm like, yeah, you are. And they're like, no, no, I know. And I'm like, no, when you say things like I can't lose weight, I'll never lose weight. I can't get healthy. You absolutely can't because you have now programmed yourself and your mind to believe that you can't possibly get healthy and that you've tried everything. Mm Mm-hmm. And that's where the reprogramming comes in. And it's very important. That's, that's why our thoughts and the words we use, like, remember our subconscious takes everything literally. So when you say something like, oh, my body is so fat, your subconscious hears fat body. And it hangs on to that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, they want a fat body. (laughs) Like when you say, my life is awful. It hangs on to awful. And what happens is our subconscious works with our conscious mind to reflect what's going on internally. So if life is awful in your mind, if that's how you feel, your mind will bring opportunities into your life to back up the fact that your life is awful. Mm -hmm. That's actually how it happens. (laughs) What you focus your energy on, your mind power on, is what you're going to get more of. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that when you're focused on something that you don't want, like, let's talk about bills for an example, (laughs) focus on bills and you're like, Oh, I have so many bills. And then more bills keep coming. It's because when you're very emotional about something, so let's talk about health. Now, so many women, especially get very emotional about Mm -hmm. their physical size and shape. When you have those negative emotions and you have that negative self-talk, it's going to produce more harmful effects for you because now you're getting caught in this shame spiral, which makes it even worse. So your subconscious hears these things and it's basically granting your wishes because those thoughts and words are filled with so many strong emotions, sadness, disappointment, shame, self-loathing, regret, guilt guilt Mm -hmm. and that's why learning how to change your perspective and change how you speak Mm -hmm. is so powerful and i am not by any means telling anyone that you need to walk around the planet positive 100 percent of the time because that is just not the case Mm -hmm. (laughs) you need to feel the feelings that come up you need to integrate all parts of yourself but like You also need to be aware of the language you're speaking, especially to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's so huge. I always tell my clients, you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, oh, I look fat today. I'm disgusting. I never be able to do this. I'm a failure. And I was like, would you say these words to your daughter or to your best friend? And they're like, well, hell no, like never in a million years. Like, why do you talk to yourself that way? They're like, huh, you're right. But why is it that we're so hard on ourselves and it's so hard to change that, you know, inner speech and switch it to a more positive? Because we've been conditioned to be like that. Mm -hmm. The human condition is that we bond over negativity. The human condition is that when we suffer, people relate to us better because they suffer too. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. Again, it's all power of the mind, right? So imagine... And this is why I'm so passionate about what I do. Imagine you start shifting your perspective and your language around things. Imagine how that ripples outwards and affects everybody around you in positive ways. Mm -hmm. 
like it's beautiful. Yeah, for sure. Do you have any other examples uh, related to health or, you know, working out or oh, nutrition yeah. <laughs> that, could, that could come from, you know, how we grew up, what we saw, what we experienced, and then that might hold us back when we try to get in better shape, lose weight or whatever our goal is in our twenties or thirties. Yeah. So one interesting thing that comes up a lot, especially around the health and nutrition piece is the word cheat day mm-hmm. has been created. I don't know what to call it. The word cheat day itself, like the word cheat implies something bad. Yeah. How many times have you gone through life and been like, Oh, he's cheating. He's a good guy. Oh, they're cheating. That's great. (laughs) The word cheat is a negative word. We have been once again, conditioned to understand the negative energy around the word cheat. And so your subconscious will automatically create these negative emotions around having a cheat day. It's going to pull in shame. It's going to pull in guilt. It's going to pull in self-loathing. And so you sit there thinking that you're having this like amazing treat or whatever, but subconsciously there's a conflict because your subconscious mind is going, Oh, we're cheating. We're cheating. Not only does it affect your mind, but like your whole digestive system shuts down. You don't absorb your food properly. You don't break down fats and proteins properly. And then before you know it, it's not a cheat day. It's a cheat week Mm -hmm. because now you're like, Oh, I shouldn't have eaten that burger and those onions Might as well. and the fries and the chocolate and the chips. So I'm just going to eat the whole row of cookies now. Mm-hmm. So one way to get around that is to shift your perspective and look at it as a celebration. Like if you're going to have one of these meals, days, whatever, look at it as a celebration of the work that you've been doing. Because if your subconscious has a stress around that, it is not going to do your body good. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a huge one. Again, also being very mindful of the words you use when you're speaking to yourself. Oh, instead of walking by the mirror and going, Ugh, I look so fat and puffy today. I want you guys to start walking in front of the mirror and being like, damn, ass looks good today. Or I'm in the process of like building some nice muscles here. I'm in the process of like releasing some of this fat all about how you look at things and the perspective of it Mm -hmm. and it becomes very powerful I actually had a client she was a bodybuilder she is a bodybuilder and for the longest time I can't I can't grow my legs I can't grow my legs I can't grow my legs I can't get quads I can't get cut lines Mm. the second she started being nice to herself and kind to herself and instead of looking at her legs and being like ew They're so small. She started looking at her legs and having better conversations. Oh, you carry me through life. Oh, you're doing a really great job. Guess what started to happen? Mm -hmm. She grew her quads. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's so powerful. The words we use. And even like when you want to set some goals and sometimes my clients will be like, oh, I don't want to eat sugar. So no sugar this week. And I was like, there's a no there. There's a sugar there. Like all the words you're using, you're just telling your mind or whatever, that this is what you don't want, but what is it that you want? How do you want to feel? How do you want that stomach to look like, or feel like, how do you want your digestion to feel like? So again, just not using words that are negative, but also affirmations that are about what you don't want anymore. Yeah. And it's really important too, to understand that like our subconscious theoretically doesn't understand negatives. So that's why we're always like, you know, focus on what you do want, but you said something important there and you may not even realize that you said it. How do you want to feel? It's Mm -hmm. never really about how you want to look. It's how do you want to feel? Well, I want to look good so I can fit in those jeans. Why? Mm -hmm. Because then I'll have more confidence. And then what? Well, and then my husband's going to find me attractive again. And then what? Well, and then I'm going to feel really sexy in who I am. Mm -hmm. The feeling. Yeah, the feeling. It's much deeper than the surface level. I just want to lose weight. (laughs) With all of my clients, I make them do like the why exercise, like the seven layers deep. Because again, there's nothing wrong with wanting to, you know, be in better shape, move a little more, 
lose a bit of weight, eat better. But what does that mean in terms of how you're feeling every day? And we do the exact same process. Okay, but why that? Why do you want to feel confident? Why is it important to you to be, you know, sexy in front of your husband? And that deeper meaning is always attached to so many more emotions. And that will fuel your quote unquote motivation, because that's not a word I really like, but that will fuel your, your inspiration, your discipline, your habits to do the things you need to do in order to feel that way. Because that reason it's so much more important than I just want to lose weight. That's fine. I can lose weight tomorrow. I don't really need to work out tonight. Right. Um, That's so important too, mm -hmm. is understanding if you don't have a strong enough, why it's going to be very difficult to stick to what you're trying to do, whether that's get healthy, gain muscle, make money, like whatever, find yeah. the great relationship there. It's all, everything is connected. Mm -hmm. Like it's all the same. And when it comes to affirmations, one of the things that people struggle with is they're like, they've never really been taught how to do them so that they work with their mind versus right. like against. So if I'm sitting here going, I'm 50 pounds lighter because remember for affirmations to work most effectively, you say them as though they're present tense. Mm -hmm. So for most people, that's a conflict. Cause if I'm sitting here going, I've lost 50 pounds of fat and my body's like, no, you haven't. Mm -hmm. I walk by the mirror. I clearly haven't <laughs> your subconscious. There's a conflict there. Mm -hmm. If I'm sitting here going, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, I'm a millionaire, but I've never even made like $500,000 or I've never even made $5,000, your subconscious mind is like, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and so what that does is it creates stress in your body. When your body is stressed out, your nervous system stressed out, it literally closes your subconscious mind down to possibilities. Mm -hmm. So the way I like to teach people how to do affirmations, there are three loopholes. You're going to say... I am the type of person that, so I'm the type of person that gets healthy and strong easily. Or you can say, I am choosing to, mm -hmm. I am choosing to release fat easily. Now I am choosing to build muscle easily. Now I'm choosing to get healthy. Now I am choosing to be more self-aware, whatever it is. The third, I am in the process of, mm -hmm. I'm in the process of getting healthy and strong. When you say I'm the type of person that I'm choosing to, or I'm in the process of your subconscious cannot argue with that. Mm. It look, it hears that statement. It's like, oh yeah, we are the type of person that could do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, we are choosing to do that. Oh yeah. We are in the process of doing this. Mm -hmm. No subconscious conflict, no stress in your system. And then as you get closer to whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, you may find that you can take those statements out and just say, I am. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge, like, I am enough is a huge statement yeah. that I hear so many people using, which is great. I'm really happy about that. <laughs> but on a subconscious level, they don't believe it because they have not developed that relationship to themselves yet. Mm -hmm. So if you start to word it as, I'm in the process of being enough, everything changes. Mm -hmm. It becomes so much more powerful. The other beautiful thing about affirmations that I like to say is affirmations are like an entry level way to start visualizing because a lot of people have trouble visualizing pictures and things in their mind. Affirmations are super powerful. They've just been given a bad rap. Mm -hmm. The challenge is most people are not consistent with their affirmations and they just do them like once or twice and then they stop. Yeah. It's like going to the gym once and going, where's my six pack? <laughs> yeah. what, what's going on? <laughs> Reprogramming your subconscious mind, especially on a conscious level, takes repetition, consistency, perseverance and practice. Yeah. Mindset work in general is an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. So when you say these affirmations and you bring that feeling into them, like I'm in the process of getting strong and healthy and you feel what that's going to be like for you. That's where the power comes from. You can't just write down an affirmation and then be like, yeah, I'm in the process of getting strong and healthy. <laughs> Check. I've done my affirmations yeah. for the day. Boop. 
but that's what people do, right? Because yeah. we get complacent and it's just like, hey, I wrote my affirmation. Oh, I wrote my gratitude. Oh, mm-hmm. I wrote my, no, you have to feel it. I'm not saying you have to spend an hour a day doing this, mm-hmm. but while you're doing it, you have to feel it yeah. through your body. <laughs> mm-hmm. A couple questions on affirmations. Would you recommend them to be super precise? So like I'm the type of person who works out three times a week or more like general, I'm choosing to become healthier. Depends on the person. So for somebody like you, for example, yes, yours would be more specific. Hmm. Somebody who's just starting out and isn't really into the habits yet. Right. I would actually do two things with them. I would say you're going to set the affirmation of I'm the type of person that's getting strong and healthy. But then that person, I would also have them writing an intention statement in the morning, which is worded, I will do this, or I intend to do this. Mm. When we do a statement like that, so I intend to work out three times this week. That's a commitment to ourselves. Right. And if we break the commitment to ourselves, our subconscious will keep bringing up things for us until we resolve it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So again, that goes back to having that relationship with self. You have to know where you're starting from. Yeah. So somebody like you, who's already been doing the exercise, doing the things. Yes. You can be very specific with yours Mm -hmm. because you already know that you're committed to doing it. Yeah. Whereas if somebody who's not says I'm the type of person that's working out three times a week, and then they only go twice a week, they run the risk of starting to beat themselves up. Because Mm -hmm. now I failed. Right. You know? Or like this doesn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm a failure. I suck. I should have done this. I should have done that. And there we go in the shame spiral again. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend a specific time during the day? You mentioned morning. I know the subconscious takes over during our sleep. So I always personally recommend doing them first thing in the morning, last thing at night. Is Is that okay? Is there any other... I mean, do them any time that you can fit them into your life. But ideally, I always recommend doing them just before you're falling asleep, because then you're in a different state of mind. Your subconscious is more open to accepting new suggestions, Mm -hmm. because as you're getting to bed, hopefully your nervous system is calm because you've let the shit go from the day. And then also, you know, when you wake up in the morning and like you're kind of awake and you're in bed but you're not really awake yeah right there is a great time to do them because you're in that same state of mind yeah or any time that feels right for you Mm -hmm. do them but here's the thing too write them down so you can see them sing them if you want record them on your phone and play them back to yourself and that is powerful yeah because then your mind is hearing your own voice saying the things and it's like oh wow I always recommend writing with a pen and a paper Mm -hmm. because the pen and the paper connects directly to your mind. Your mind looks at that and goes, Oh, that's us. Yeah. I wrote this down. Yeah. Yeah, That's me. (laughs) (laughs) So the more, I mean, I have a client and honestly, I wish I would have thought of this idea. (laughs) So she created pillowcases for her and her daughter that actually say I am enough. Wow. So as they're falling asleep, what's the last thing they see? Mm -hmm. I'm enough. And Mm -hmm. when they wake up in the morning, what's the first thing they see? I'm enough. Yeah. I was like, you should sell those. (laughs) (laughs) You really should. Yeah. And like you said, you know, you have to repeat, repeat, repeat. And the more you can see it, even if it's in your phone screensaver or on your wall, you know, on your fridge, in your mirror, you don't have to take five minutes every time you see it. Yeah password yeah I love that idea automate things like seriously make it a password how many times you log into your computer every day Mm -hmm. I'm enough 2021 (laughs) I'm in the process of getting healthy 2021 (laughs) like yeah automate it man make life simple Mm -hmm, for sure and you know when you mentioned that you can start with the I'm the process of you know I'm I'm choosing to I'm the type of person who and then for me anyway, if I speak on my own experience, I felt like some of them shifted to the I am naturally. 
right? Yes. So the first specific, well, specific, depending on what we were working on a couple of years ago was all about my confidence, right? I used to tell you when I'm traveling, I'm that type of person, but when I'm back home, I feel this way. And you were like, first stop saying that because you're <laughs> amplifying the fact that when you travel versus when you're here, you're a different person. So stop saying that. I was like, yeah, good point. Thank you. But then, you know, just working on the confidence to be myself wherever I am, anywhere, anytime. So my first affirmation was I'm the type of person who has confidence to be herself anywhere and every day. And I don't even remember how, but at some point I was like, oh, I don't even say I'm the type of person. It became, I am confident to be myself wherever I am, anywhere, anytime, you know? So that was cool to kind of feel the shift. And the other thing I wanted to mention, because I've had this comment from some of my clients who are a bit maybe skeptical at first, because they have these beliefs that affirmations are woohoo. And I'm not going to look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I'm skinny, I'm skinny, I'm skinny. But now you guys understand how to use affirmations properly so that your subconscious goes, oh, cool. Yeah, we can accept this affirmation. And one thing that I realized at first is sometimes you won't even believe it yet. Mm -hmm. Even if you use, I'm the type of person I'm choosing to and all of that. So I would be in a situation where I would have absolutely no confidence in myself. And then I would repeat, I'm the type of person who has, who has confidence in herself. And I was like, I have no confidence right now. Like, you know, there's so many self doubts and I'm freaking out. But even though you don't believe it at first, the more you repeat it, then you end up believing it. And this is why the process might take time. This is why we need consistency. This is why we need to repeat. Because I always tell my clients, you might not believe it. You might be eating the bag of chips. I'm the type of person who has healthy nutrition habits. <laughs> and then you might laugh. You're like, yeah, not true. I'm eating the whole bag of chips. But then just interrupting the pattern, I think yes. it's sometimes a step that we underestimate, you know, it's uh, important. And we're like, I failed because I said my affirmation while I was eating the back of chips and I still ate the chips after, but that's okay. Because eventually you'll be able to redirect that pattern or that action or that behavior. So yeah. I feel like that interruption, um, to me anyway, even if I was not believing what I was saying at first was very powerful and not something that we can just feel like it's a failure because I still skipped my workout or ate too much ice cream, you know? So that was literally the perfect lead in to some stuff here because <laughs> yes, we can feel like we're lying to ourselves, even with the loopholes, but the loopholes are more so like the, I'm the type of person is more so for your subconscious mind to feel right. better. You get to make choices every second of every day. Mm -hmm. If you are choosing to eat the bag of chips that is a conscious choice that you made. If you catch yourself in that pattern, you're like, I'm the type of person that's first, I highly doubt you're going to be doing your affirmation while you're eating the bag of chips. But if you're eating the bag of chips and you start to have that, like, Oh, I'm such a failure, blah, 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 blah. We want you to interrupt the pattern. You can do that in multiple ways. One, just by recognizing that you're having that self-talk is a pattern interrupt. Two, you can imagine a giant stop sign flashing. That's a pattern interrupt. You can say something like, cancel, cancel, delete. You can say, whoa, thanks for your opinion. Whatever it is that interrupts that thought process. Mm -hmm. and then right away, you're going to insert an empowering statement. And that is where you could use the affirmation right. as your empowering statement. No, I'm the type of person that has good habits. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person that gets to make choices. Because every second of every day, we get to make a choice. Yeah. If you're sitting there going, oh, I feel so disgusting and gross. Cool. It's called self-responsibility. Make a new choice. <laughs> it's actually that easy. And people yeah. get really pissed off when I say that. And this is I'm why I love you. <laughs> yeah. You call me out on my bullshit and I love it. <laughs> but that's what self-responsibility is. Yes. It's recognizing, stop looking outside of yourself mm -hmm. to try to figure out what's wrong with you. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with you. <laughs> It's what's going on with me right now. And why is this going on with me? And oh, right. Because I made this choice. Yes. Me. I yeah. made it. <laughs> yeah. I always say like, nobody ever ate anything by accident. Like the, the third slice of pizza did not fall in your mouth out of nowhere, you know? Yeah. yeah. But the bag of chips fell in my mouth. <laughs> did it. Okay. You're not the one who bought it and went to get it. And, you know, but again, it's also being kind to ourselves because yes. realizing that 
then don't hit yourself in the back of the head. Like, oh my God, then these are my choices and I'm making all the wrong choices. And like, I'm even more a failure now that I realize that the power is within me. No, like it's all part of being self-aware and all part of the process. And that will become empowering because when you realize and when you start feeling that every single decision you make can shape how you look, how you feel your whole freaking life, that's so awesome. Like what else can you manifest? What else can you take ownership of, you know, but it's a process for sure. And I always talk about this relationship to self because it's so important. And it was one of the most important things I ever had to learn in my whole entire life. When you have the relationship to yourself and you begin to be kind to yourself, Mm. it becomes very hard to do things to your body that are not serving it. It becomes very hard to keep eating the crappy food that you know is not serving you. It becomes very hard to say mean things to yourself because like, would you ever say that to your daughter or your friend? No. When you create this relationship to yourself, that is where your power lies. And I know there's a lot of people out there that will do like the mirror work and stuff, which I don't disagree with, but you have to be in the right mindset to do that work. Because if I'm standing in front of the mirror and I'm looking myself in the eye and I'm saying, I deeply love and accept myself but I don't actually have that relationship to myself. You know what that does? It creates a massive amount of stress Mm -hmm. in your subconscious and your nervous system. Yeah. And we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Can you get to the point where you're doing that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is it the first place you should start? It's not what I would recommend. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. For somebody who's like mind blown by this conversation (laughs) because they have like the aha moments if you want to take it like step by step for the process and it will look different from one person to the other, but like, what would you recommend us doing if we've never really been aware of our subconscious mind, if we didn't really understand it was coming from our childhood or like something else, if we've never used affirmation. So what's like a step-by-step kind of journey we can go on. Step-by-step journey starts with being aware of how you're speaking and thinking to yourself. That is the number one. Mm-hmm. Start with any, that. any tips to be aware? Because some people live like a crazy back-to-back distraction responsibility lives and they don't even take the time to have the space to be aware. Any practices? Yes, or- you actually <laughs> need to take the time to be aware. So one thing that you can do, there are a ton of breathwork exercises you can do, but it can be as simple as just sitting still for like one minute and breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth and in through your nose and out through your mouth do like three to five times it takes less than a minute Mm -hmm. it instantly brings you back to the present moment to be self-aware you need to be in the present moment Mm -hmm. if you're always worried about what's going to be happening or you're living in the future if you're always sad and depressed and thinking about what could have been, should have been whatever you're living in the past Mm -hmm. we want you living in the present moment just breathe and it is very hard for people which you just said sometimes you just stop and take a moment (laughs) yeah and that's all it takes to get started guys like it's one minute breathe and ask yourself how am I feeling you know a lot of people never I used to never ask myself this question for freaking 24 years I didn't ask myself this question it was like go 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 you know study work skating training and then I got to Australia and I had like nothing to do and it was the first time like am I really happy how am I feeling and it might be scary to just even ask that question but is that little gate that little door you're opening to so much awareness and so many cool beautiful things you can work on so okay so first step one minute just breathe ask yourself the question how am I feeling and that will help you become more aware in your day-to-day actions and thoughts yeah Number two, and we kind of touched on this, but not really, you need to get clear on what you actually are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So be clear on what it is you're doing. Is it that you want to get healthy and strong? Is it that you're trying to build muscle because you want to do a show? Like whatever it is, Mm -hmm. get clear on what it is. Yeah. So then you can create the affirmations that support that Mm -hmm. the word affirmation itself literally just means affirming information Mm -hmm. you're affirming information for your subconscious to give it direction Mm 
when you have the goal set out or the intention that you know that you're trying to achieve, these affirmation statements are like stepping stones to help you get there because they help open your subconscious mind up to possibilities and opportunities that you may not have seen before. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, your subconscious is a goal getting machine, but it needs to know what you want. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I want to do this. No, maybe this. Oh, maybe. No, you can get clear on what it is you're trying to achieve Mm -hmm. and why, why are you trying to achieve that? Those would be the three beginning steps I would tell anybody. Yeah. And when you are consistent with that stuff, it can be powerfully Mm life-changing and it can happen quicker than you're expecting if you are consistent and don't analyze things. Mm -hmm. When we're trying to reprogram our subconscious mind, it's like people are waiting for angels to start singing and trumpets (laughs) to start playing. That's not what happens. (laughs) Things are happening underneath the surface. So maybe, and you've experienced this, you talked about it. Maybe one day it's like, you know, I wasn't feeling confident in that situation. And then the next time you're in that situation, you don't even think twice about it. Exactly. And the confidence is there. And you're like, Mm -hmm. oh, that's weird. Yeah. No, it's you. (laughs) Yeah. 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 But it takes consistency. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. People make it out to be way harder than it needs to be, but you do need to be consistent. Exactly. And I think there's a limiting belief right there. People are like, oh, is it really this simple? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. But don't do it just once. And like, oh, why am I not healthy yet? I told myself that I was going to be the type of person who's going to have healthier habits this morning. No, like, and consistency again, I always say it's not a sexy word, but it's so important you know, Powerful for everything, <laughs> for all your habits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those pattern interruptions. So maybe there's four steps. Let's do four. Let's do four. <laughs> so becoming self-aware yes. of what you're doing, taking a moment, like just breathe. Mm-hmm. When you recognize those patterns, you're going to interrupt them mm-hmm. and then immediately replace it with an empowering statement, which is where your affirmation can serve double time. Mm-hmm an empowering statement. You've already written it. You already have your affirmation. Use it. Yeah. It's a beautiful journey because that's what it is. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's a self-exploration really. Yeah. And when you start to make these changes and these shifts and create these new empowering beliefs, and this isn't woo, this is neuroscience. Like Mm -hmm. this is science, but when this starts to happen, you start to look at it and go, what else can I do? Yeah. What else is possible for me? What else can I tap into? Mm -hmm. Like your possibilities are limitless Mm -hmm. once you believe that they are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just about getting the ball rolling, right? Like a lot of my clients, they, they tell me flat out, like I'm skeptical. I don't believe in affirmations, but I will try it because now I understand that these are beliefs and all of that. And then, you know, they'll message me after a couple of weeks, like, huh, there is a weird shift happening, but I think, I think your thing is working. And then they're like, oh, what else, where else can I use this? Because we're obviously giving a lot of health and fitness, nutrition examples, but I use this in my business. I use this in my relationships. I use this in so many areas, all of the areas of my life. Right. So it becomes really powerful when you understand that you have the power to change these beliefs and reprogram your subconscious mind, not because you saw and you live something for your whole life, that it has to stay this way, right? Mm-hmm. You can become another person now if you want to. It's all about, like you said, changes, choices, decisions. So it's a really cool journey to be on. Well, and it's cool too, because the whole, I don't, I don't believe in that, or I already know how to do that. The moment we say that, we close our subconscious mm-hmm. off to possibilities. And that's why I, the first thing I say to people is that I need you to be willing to be curious yes. about what could happen mm-hmm. or change or transform if mm-hmm. you allowed yourself. Yeah. Open to, to possibilities was a big <laughs> one for me. Just be open to all the possibilities. Yeah. And then yeah. what happens is all of these things start coming. And that's when like the synchronicities start coming. Your subconscious mind knows exactly what you're ready for. Yeah. And when you make the choice to be ready for it, your subconscious is like, pew, pew, pew. I'm going to bring all of these opportunities. I'm going to show you (laughs) like, that's how it works. Growth on steroids. 
Yes, <laughs> it really is. Which is my 2021 mantra or a hashtag. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, that's amazing. Super powerful. Okay, so before we finish, let's play the mind dime game. I love this game. So you can explain it and then I'll give a personal experience, which is... Um, yours is probably... <laughs> The best one I've ever. <laughs> so the reason I teach people how to play the mind dime game is because this teaches you how to communicate with your subconscious mind, mm -hmm. teaches you how to set an intention, teaches you how to get out of your own way. So what you're going to do is everybody listening to this podcast, when you're done listening to it, you're going to get out a piece of paper with a pen and you're going to write, wouldn't it be cool if I could see a dime in the next 48 hours and you're going to feel the excitement of seeing that dime in 48 hours, mm -hmm. that's the intention. Then I want you to allow yourself to be curious to how the dime could show up. Yeah. Is it going to be an actual dime? Is it the word dime? Is it a cartoon dime? Doesn't matter. Be mm -hmm. open to how it could show up. When you see the dime, you're going to tag Claudia and myself with the hashtag mind dime and show us your dime. And if it's safe, clean is what I'm getting at <laughs> to pick it up, <laughs> pick up the dime and keep it because as you keep seeing more dimes, mm -hmm. you can collect them. And when you have enough dimes to buy yourself like a fancy tea or coffee, you go and pay with dimes and you thank your subconscious in the universe Yes, and the cashier will be staring at you like you're crazy. <laughs> That's part of the fun. So the intention is, wouldn't it be cool if I could see a dime in the next 48 hours? Mm -hmm. You were not looking for the dime. This is not about finding the dime. Yeah. This is about being open to how it appears. Mm -hmm. And that is your subconscious's job. Yeah. Your story is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. So while I was in Southeast Asia for three months last winter, I was playing the mind game, right? So every time I would get to a new country and I did four countries in three months, I was like, oh, what would it take for me to see a dime in the next, I think I did three days, in the next three days. And I, I got to Laos, which is a tiny country. I wasn't even, uh, even supposed to go there. And I said the intention when I got there what would it take for me to see a dime in the next three days only to realize this country, their money, they don't have any coins. It's all notes. So I was like, how the hell am I going to find a dime if they don't even have coins in their currency? And I was walking, probably just wandering around and everything. And I saw a freaking coin. I guess it was a dime. I don't remember like the exact number it was and it was from Thailand right so somebody was traveling from Thailand I guess and had dropped that coin and I was laughing so hard so I took a story I sent it to Brenda I was like I'm in a country they have no coins and I said the intention <laughs> to find a dime and I found it in less than three days so you know, I that was I pretty have cool that video actually because it made me laugh so hard yeah. But that's the thing. So you can word it in one of two ways. What would it take to see a dime in the next 40 hours? Or wouldn't it be cool mm -hmm. to see a dime? Because it's a game. Yeah. Yeah. We have but to make it fun. Have fun. Yeah. Your, your subconscious mind in the universe want to have fun with you. They want to play with you. Mm -hmm. Your mind wants to play. Yeah. Play with it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then you can challenge yourself. You know, we did red balloons, we did a tiger, we did an owl, and then, you know, we graduated to like quarters or so. Yeah. So that's the, your first little mind game that would really, you know, encourage you guys to try out and just be open to seeing a dime and tag us whenever you see it. Don't look for it. That's huge though. Cause when you look for it, you go outside for a walk and like, Oh, why am I going to see a dime today? And you look for it. You're not going to see it. It's subconscious no. and you have to trust that it will appear. Um, so yeah, try it out and uh, tag us whenever you see your dime. And we use dimes because they're kind of not that popular anymore. Yeah. So when people see them, they're like, whoop, I've had people have them fall out in tanning beds. <laughs> you had a country that didn't even have quarter dime nickel things. <laughs> I've had people, I mean, I've seen them in the middle of the forest, in the middle of winter. Mm -hmm we're everywhere we're just yeah. you have to be open mm -hmm. and allow yeah. yourself to be curious about how it's going to appear yeah amazing 
Well, that was a powerful conversation. I definitely going to re-listen to it. Hope you guys took some notes. If you have any questions, if you want to deep dive into all abundance mindset, uh, mindset work, subconscious work, please, please follow Brenda. So you have your podcast. I have my podcast. I have a lot of stuff on Instagram. I have a really great quiz that's free. If you're wondering what your abundance mindset actually is, Mm -hmm. you can go to my website or you can go to Instagram and in the profile, it links right to the quiz and it tells you your results. It's pretty Mm -hmm. (laughs) eye-opening. It really is. And I will link all of your um, links and everything in the show notes, but yeah, podcast, you got great stuff. I love your IG uh, videos and all of that, your little games. Um, She also posts super powerful affirmations. If you're like, oh, I don't really know what my affirmations could be just check you know brenda's profile if you have any questions reach out to her she's helped me she's helped some of my friends my clients so yeah you're a big big part of like growth on steroids (laughs) i feel like that needs to be can we hashtag that we should hashtag that i feel like we need to (laughs) yeah so so thank you i really appreciate your time for me today and also for my audience as well And um, I always finish every episode because I love quotes. I find them inspiring and it's a bit like affirmations. I just like to use them, have them everywhere. So what is one of your favorite quotes and why? And we'll finish on that. Oh, my Lanta, there's so many. I know. (laughs) The first one that pops into your mind. One of my favorite quotes actually, and we kind of talked about it is if you think you can, then you can. And if you think you can't, then you can't. Mm -hmm. Either way, you're right. Yeah. That would be one of my favorites because it absolutely speaks to the power of your mind Mm -hmm. and your thoughts. Yeah. And that's such a great way to kind of summarize in a quote this whole conversation. So, right. (laughs) That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Brenda. Thank you guys. If any questions, reach out to us and we look forward to seeing your mind dimes. Thank you. J'espère que cette conversation awesome t'a inspiré. Et d'ailleurs, I would love to hear back from you. Rejoins Karmakin sur les réseaux sociaux et tag me in a post pour partager ce que tu retiens de cet épisode. Je serais vraiment grateful aussi si tu pouvais me laisser un rating and review pour le podcast. Ça me permet d'avoir un impact positif sur plus de gens comme toi. Merci beaucoup d'avoir été à l'écoute and until next time, je te souhaite une journée awesome!